My name is Sean, and it's time for part three. Getting very distracted. All day long. Let's just finish this up, man. Let's just go to the... Whoops. Ooh, I hit... Oh, God, I hit all the wrong buttons. Oh, God. I rewound it. Uh, yeah, at this point in time, we see that... Oh, cool. The fact that uh, good old Demaga sees exactly what he's up against. Can, in fact, get himself up roaches. As a response, I mean, honestly, if nothing came out here, um, could very easily not build these roaches. Could very easily just begin expanding, and if he sees a junk attack, just, you know, throwing out the necessary stuff. No speed. Doesn't want to wait that long. Just prepares the attack. Sends the attack. Um, uh, pretty, pretty commonly, um... This these upgrades will finish a little bit after the 10 minute mark, which is why 2 2 should be done by around 14 minutes. And just note that wow, it takes 20 more seconds, so it should finish at 10 10. So if we start a 190 second upgrade, that should finish at 13 20. Timings! So we should have 1 1 and not much else. This is this is a really this is a very nicely timed thing from MVP. Ten minutes is really when one one is done, and most Terran players can start building a whole bunch of units, thereby making this timing attack so good. Why is this timing attack work? Because this third is vulnerable. This would be bad on Cloud Kingdom. I think this would suck on. Uh, what other maps would this really suck ass on? Probably Akalon Waste. This attack would suck on. God, it would suck there. God. What other maps would it just be freaking horrible? It would be horrible on that map that... Looks like a... Like a vagina. Everyone knows what I'm talking about. It's the ladder map. We all thought it. I mean, like, really... like it, Everything's terrible on that map. 100% of strategies are awful because... Everything about the map is weird. The unibrow that you maneuver across. Ugh. It would be bad there. Uh, actually, it would be pretty good there. The, the third base is pretty exposed there. Um, <laughs> what, what, what other maps? I'm blanking on other maps. Um, um, Star Station. This would be pretty good on. It's, it's a little bit long distance. The short distance and the openness of this make this a viable uh, uh, attack. I would just like to note that this is not good on all maps. It's not good on all maps. And this is where MVP starts to panic. Oh, get me out of here! Ah, wow! Alright, but that's fine because we have so many speed bane links. This is a really nice attack timing because often he will not have combat shield, which means he double dies. So, the real threat moves right on in. And this is just like easy peasy cleanup for Breezy. Cleanup spleens up. I am quite the fan of droning hard behind that uh, Baneling burst because even if um, these Zerglings do some damage, I'm worried that we haven't exploited the situation quite enough, but. The intuitive follow-up, go back to what the usual build was. And uh, in terms of spending the money, fourth hatch, great. Fourth hatch and expansion, bad. Bad. Freaking bad. If we're both low on... You, or um, After you've done a lot of damage to uh, just really any player, he now has to do damage to you to tie the game up. Not to win, but to tie it up. So how do we lose? We let him do damage to us. So, if we are low on units, which we are because we've lost a bunch of stuff, taking a fourth creates another point of vulnerability. If we had Mutilus and Zerglings to be able to cover all that, then it's safe. Then it's safe. But because we just have ground units, it's not safe. It's not safe. We really need the Spire to take the fourth. If you have so much money you don't know what to do with, just build two macro hatches in your main base, man. Dedicate to mass lanes, or just sit with the money. 
Um, but, you know, this this continued flood of Ling's Banelings uh, is probably not going to do a, a whole lot. The faster Spire, like, I will know right here. If we go Gas Gas, lot of drones, and Spire right now, our Spire will be done right here. And then we can take our fourth right now, and we can break the bone that's right there. Just kill him! Ugh. So there it is. This is not great. This is really not. This is really not. There's nothing special about this. Still gonna see me. He should retire. Ugh. <laughs> The other thing is continued production is, um, I think this round of Lings is a reasonable defensive choice at this point in time. But part of me is just like, Naga, be careful! Ah. There is the impending doom button of the 2-2 upgrades finishing soon. Which is one of the reasons why I like to say, get these things back up and operational soon. Because if we're up against 2-2, we just almost always immediately die if we're 0-0. Zero, zero. Which is the risk to this. Yeah. But either way, taking this, because we now have a spire down. Continued burst the front attempts. I think that this is a low percentage play. Uh, is more likely to even the game up than it is to close the game out. I think we're sort of seeing that emerge to fruition. Why would we want to do this here? I mean, I guess, I guess, to allow us to catch up in upgrades. In this position, there's a near 0% chance he, he can afford to go for 3-3. So that way we can begin sort of clawing our way back. But by and large, I think the last two attacks sort of are the like, Hey, Terran, I used to have an advantage, but I want you to have it now. But, of course, this is Demaga that we're talking about. The king of ballerness. It was so awesome and so swanky. Oh, the drones are under attack. Yes. This is exactly why we don't take this fourth until we have our Mutilus ready and set to go. Because it's so easy for the multiple medevacs in multiple locations to destroy our everything. Where are the Mutilists? Ah, they're, they're killing all of this southern dropship. What about the Northern one? Oh, what a crisis this one was and is. 2 2 units don't die to Zerglings ever under any circumstance. Nope, never. Nope. Not, nope, never in a million, million years. Alright, cool. And other exciting news, um, I think Demaga is doing the, the kind of common Ling Muta versus Bio play, which is to take a lot of additional bases and to try to win with the overwhelming numbers of things. Um, finally catching up on the 2-2 upgrades is a relief. Once we hit 2-2, we're pretty certain we're either equal or just, you know, slightly behind. Well, actually... I guess it's impossible to be way behind if we're a 2-2. <laughs> it's physically frickin' impossible otherwise. So I think that this looks weird, but it makes sense from Damaga's point of view. Just to max out the expanse. Still being pretty defensive with the Mutalisks. Going to be poking the front to see what's up. And otherwise doing this same fast tech. Splitting up the Zerglings, the good defense. Uh, are there any units up here? I feel like there should be units up here, but the Zergling's doing a lot of work. And the weird thing is that we're not actually seeing mines as Demaga, which is pretty odd. This moment, with the siege tank being seen, that is one of those like, oh, oh, now I can now I can really begin harassing with with Mutalisks. I can really begin getting in there, man. He's not going to be going bio mine drop. This is pretty low percentage. 
it might be better to sneak eight Zerglings in there, and then as the push is coming out, then morph to Banelings and move out. But at the very least, oh, we're, we're up against not Bio Mine. Cool, I'm going to go back to Mutilus production. Great response from Demaga. Really nice. Ling Muta Baneling. Oh, yeah, Lings. Great unit to have against Marine Tanku. What a fantastic unit to have. We're well, going to be getting some additional geysers here as we tech up to Hive. Uh, I would probably still favor um, going for Ultralisks in this position because they're just so incredibly good against Marine play. Just so, I love them. Oh, so good. Other than that, I think pretty straightforward. Infestors, we actually skipped out on the Infestors until now. Before we were going just totally gung-ho Infestor crazy against a mine player. But against a um, a more aggressive marine tank, or uh, against a more hit the front, straight up marine tanking style, these Infestors have a hard time because they, they have to projectile shoot, which means they have to get a little bit closer, which means they're more often in range of the tank. Yada, 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 yada. So I think uh, Demaga's answer here is very simple. Do not engage until Adrenal Gland. Which, by the way, is freaking amazing. Increases the attack speed by 20%. Urgh. Alright, so, just chillin', chillin', waitin', exacerbatin' his particular position. Ooh, those are some juicy marines. Kill those off. Ooh. Yeah, I think the big mass expand surge forward. A very nice play. Oh, yeah. Fungal growth? Nope. Infested Terrans? Yep. We have so much creep. Oh yeah! I totally forgot to mention Creep! One of the big, wonderful benefits of having our opponent on the back foot for so long within a single game is that we get to spread the Creep so far forward. And as many Zerg players have experienced over time, overrunning all with Ling Muta feels great. But we pull back, don't ever want to just be engaging Mutalus vs. Marines. So good. It's cetera, speeding up, getting ultra lists out, kiting is bleeding. Oh, yes. It is a pretty straightforward game from this point in time in terms of our production. Now, normally people have been saying, have been reading the forums, Ultralists are useless without some sort of Infestor in the mix. How not true. This is a kind of funky angle of attack. Uh, if we move out to here, if we see an opponent coming right here, we actually have creep spread, so we can pretty quickly cut back to here, and then have this nice attack angle through mid, and of course the surround angle from behind. We might lose this base, but I think we're good there. Also, if we come here, we can do a really simple simultaneous threat, and just kind of box these dudes, and uh, send one or two over here, or what have you. Most importantly, we can hit the big flank angle by moving up along top. This is the very moment where this should be seized. And then our triple is amazing against Marine Tank. This is a good ADD daily. Seemed to go well. A nice pullback from Demaga, who was quite far ahead and then fell into kind of a dangerous position, but took all these bases really quickly. This base, as we can clearly see, was not a real big factor in this game. This base was because of these two additional gas geysers. Um, the, the defense that Demaga displayed, getting everything set up, the sort of answer upon seeing the marine tank come out, all in good shape. A lot of nice answers for Zerg in this matchup. Do, 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 do. And babies to own everything. All right, cool. Let's just take questions. I want to go eat more, so I'm gonna go do that after this. Mm. I'm also excited for Portal tomorrow. Mm. Also, has anyone seen the show Falling Skies? 
The show looks pretty good. I don't know. Hmm. Kind of move for a donut. Is Falling what like cuz I remember the start of Falling Skies being like all right, it was like mm. it was like mm. Salsi says, don't you think Demago's con control could have been way better in the first engagement? I'm going to assume you're talking about this game. Um, I think it could have been... There were three, I would say three notable engagements at the start. There was this one. It happens at like 11 minutes at the front. This one does not necessarily need fantastic control. Like, this could have been a little better. I mean, we, we did lose a huge number of banelings improperly. But right now, the advantage is tremendous. I mean, we killed 24 workers. He's at 29. There's no way this is going to be able to safely stay up. This is really where we should be droning. It was, And then this follow-up attack happens at like 12 and a half minutes. That's like mediocre. And it's these sorts of things that even if you could control it a little bit better, does it really matter? I mean, you don't want to be in this situation where your banelings are rolling up. You can't run because they'll stim and t take you down. You can't uh, really get a good angle because he has the medevax and the stim. And then it's kind of like, Bleh. and there was a third one after that that was equally Bleh. So I really think the answer is he could have uh, followed up better. Hmm. Let's see here. Deuce Starcraft says, what could MVP have done to come back in that game? Or prevent that bust slash damage? From the bust in the beginning. I actually, I'm, I'm questioning the choice to go tank. I actually think he could have been in good shape going bio mine, because he's just so ahead in upgrades. I mean, he's two two versus zero zero. Like after this attack, which went pretty horrifically for Demaya. Again, one of the ones that Saucy was noting. Oh, could he have controlled better? Yeah, I mean, like right now, I feel like MVP can actually just begin moving out mid-map to try to break the front. Like, I think these drops are... can do some damage, can push the uh, Zerg back, but I think the Terran can actually just begin going out. I mean, look at this count. Uh, there's only two mines here? Did he go back? Yeah, I just think this should have been mines. He could have six mines in addition to these seven or 27 Marines and seven Marauders. He has, he has enough medevacs to be able to begin. Not plenty, but he has enough. Then he can just go, go, go. Oh, what the hell? What are these things doing as tech labs? Wait, what? Why are those there? What are these doing here? Why, why did he get those? Is it, I guess he saw the roaches and was like, Oh my god, Danger Will Robinson? Did he need those tech maps? Were those pivotal for his defense? You know, I don't think so. Feels like it would have been vastly superior to get Marines. Huh. I actually didn't even see that. I mean, in this case, yeah, I mean, I actually think that it's even more important to get the mines. And, I mean, you can just go m Marines out of these um, dudes anyways. And just, you know, keep building uh, some, like, one Marauder. And then six Marines at a time. And then two Mines at a time. Because, let's be honest, you can't really afford to do much else. Yeah, I really think that uh, MVP needed to crank up the aggression. That's in short what I think. Continuing minds. Hmm. What do I think about Invasion for a Symbol from last night? I haven't seen it. 
need to see it. Den Tanker says, is this the only way to play versus Biomine, or are there other just as good ways? So, the uh, a style that I have seen destroy Biomine, but is not really used, is Ling Hydra Bangling. Just Fs it up bad. Uh, the obvious danger with Ling uh, Hydra Mine is that you don't have a good answer to drops sort of wiggling around the outsides. Um, I wonder what you could do with that. I don't know. Probably just good focused drop defense. I mean, if Hydras get anywhere close, you can really wreck stuff, but um, the Hydras uh, do outrange Marines, 6 to a, six to 5. So often the Marines are not even getting good shots off on the Hydras. And uh, the same reason that, that Zergling Baneling in overwhelming numbers is good against Biomine, that plus the Hydras to shoot down anything else and to pick off the Mines, uh, also quite good. That's, that's probably one of the better mid-game compositions against that. If there were a decent Star Wars Star Trek RTS, would you play it? Star Wars, I would. Those AT-AT walkers? Mmm. Imagine how bad their AI would be. Alright, that's it. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm just gonna go to bed. Um, no, I'm not. I'm gonna go eat. <laughs> um, tomorrow I'll be playing Portal 2. Uh, please go to day9.tv and tell me any WCS USA round of 16 or round of 32 game that you would like to see.